Okay, this video is called The Medical Monk Diet. And where this comes from is, you know, I kind of get different feedback on what's a good name for my channel or a name for my diet. And one of them is the bad boy of veganism, which other people joke is like saying you're the toughest guy in the band. Because I'm talking about a lot of other things that you'll notice most of, you know, the vast majority of the internet nutrition experts are trying to sell something, their channel or some product or something, whereas I'm not. And I talk about a lot of things that are, if you will, controversial topics. They get all get shadow banned. You know, when you criticize coffee or any big commercial thing, something happens. I just know because I look at the video counts. They all get, you know, partially shadow banned. So anyways, that's why I was called the bad boy of veganism. I'll explain that in a little more detail. That there's different levels of truth telling on the internet. And what I've noticed is it's very safe to say what I would call old grandma truth. Old grandma says, you know, eat your fruits and vegetables, get your sleep. Your mom says stuff like that. And it's the truth. She means, well, everybody gets it. And so there's there's nothing at stake when you talk like that. And that's level one of truth. These are the truth zones or the truth levels. Uh, level two of truth is, you know, something that you could learn, for example, in med school is pretty much anything taught in pre-med or med school is pretty much guaranteed what I would call baby truth. You know, it's true, it's nice to know, but it's not the big stuff, okay? The big stuff is is knowing things like eat a starch-based diet. <clears throat> that can save a lot of people's life. And I would say that Dr. McDougall is the king of level two, where he'll point out problems with medical theory. He'll, he'll point out that stents do not increase longevity of life, okay? He'll point out that open heart surgery, cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft does not increase longevity of life. So these are very important things to know. He'll point out that all the healthy long-term populations eat a starch-based diet. So that's what I call level two truths. And they're very good to know. Uh, they're super important. Okay, but um, that's as far as most people go on the internet. And on, on like the, the common internet channels, like the one we're watching right now, on the, the one that starts with a Y and a T. Okay, on the other hand, the next level up is what I call level three truth. Level three truth is something that will get the, the, the video partially shadow banned. You know, I don't know if it's artificial intelligence detects this. I don't know how it all works, but I, I, I just guarantee, because I look at all the view counts. If you talk about something like F minus in the water, that video will be markedly reduced in the number of views it gets. And I don't think, I think the audience want to see that stuff. It's just that I don't think the powers that be, you know, the billionaire perverts who run the world want the proles to be educated about all these things. They don't want you to know about the side effects of AL in your water, in your sky, in your food, okay? They don't want you to know, <clears throat> excuse me, that soy and AL and F- minus <clears throat> are all being used to help sterilize the proles who they view as the useless eaters. They don't want you to know that, okay? Um, so I think I'm kind of the king of this level, level three. So level three is what gets you shadow banned, but it doesn't get you kicked off, okay? And I don't, I'm not monetizing my channel. And yes, I, I would love it if I had more views, but I know it's never going to happen, okay? Because I kind of live at, sh at level three quite often. And the reason I do it is because I want my channel to be useful. I can't be useful if I don't tell you stuff that's otherwise difficult for you to learn. So that's why I do it. But there is a level beyond this called level four. And for that, you have to go to other channels. Level four truth is not allowed okay in in sort of this area all right so you need to know that and if you have a brain in your head you will do so okay all right and then the next thing my sort of diet i called it the spartan vegan <clears throat> and the spartan vegan goes back to the idea number one it's very sparse it's very simple it's very cheap because i think in simplicity comes a lot of strength Anybody, you know, I've known some people who are great achievers like Mark and Dave Schultz, world and Olympic champion wrestlers, and they simplify their life. They just focus their life on wrestling. And I've seen other great achievers. And I also know when I've, you know, cranked out books, what I'll do is, even though I'm working full time, I just don't do anything else. You know, you simplify your life and you focus on something. So I kind of jokingly called my diet the Spartan vegan diet. And also, you know, my background is being, you know, a wrestler. So, which, you know, I'm seeking high performance. I want the best possible health, not some wimpy compromise with, you know, not being as fat as your cousin. I want what's the best you could do. So <clears throat> I like the name Spartan Vegan. Um, and that led to some good things. So here's the typical Spartan Vegan diet. It's real simple. There's only three foods. 
Starches is the main supply of cal uh, calories. Fruits um, as the next uh, big supply. Let's say starches in the ballpark of, you know, 60 or more percent of calories from starches. Uh, fruits, I tend to eat about 30 to 40 percent of my calories from fruits, but I'm still exercising quite a bit. If I exercise less, then I would eat less fruits because they can make you gain weight. They don't satisfy hunger as well as starches. Veggies for some extra nutrients like your nitrates, nitric oxide precursors, vitamin B12, only, only uh, methylcobalamin. I would never take cyano. I think that's for idiots. Um, I, I monitor my level by just checking my B12 level about every six months or so. Uh, sometimes not even that often, and it's, I've been, it's been working out well for me. I only take it about once every two weeks. Uh, some people take it more often. It depends on what the dose is and what, how, what quantities you buy it in. By that, I mean sometimes they'll only let you buy, you know, a thousand micrograms per pill so you, you'll take it less often than somebody who's got a smaller dose per pill okay then all the basic social stuff for getting your health squared away that's all real important here's the food plate for the spartan vegan diet you know the fruits the starches the greens and then the only thing i drink is water that's it uh dr mcdougall and chef aj they eat less um less fruits they're probably in the ballpark of only eating five or ten percent of their calories from fruits they're afraid that if you eat too much fruits, you're going to gain weight. Um, other people say they eat tons of fruits and they don't gain weight at all. Some of it all depends because a lot of these guys who eat tons of fruits are really young. You know, like Bobby Bitteru and Cyrus Kumbata, the Mastering Diabetes guys. Or, you know, that ultra marathoner guy like Michael Arnstein. You know, he moved to Hawaii to get more fruits so he can run his ultra marathons. So, you know, that'd be a nice life. You got all this good fruit available in a warm climate like Hawaii. Plus, it's a beautiful place to run. So that would be nice, man. If you want to be an ultra marathoner, what could be better than living there? Okay, here's a quick chart of comparing different diets. And basically, you know, standard American diet, you're screwed. Your health is screwed. You know, it's real high in fat, a lot of saturated fat. You end up with a lot of coronary artery disease, cerebral vascular disease, um, especially coronary artery disease and carotid disease. Instead of saying cerebral vascular, let me just say cervical, the neck, internal carotid artery. Uh, they end up impotent very routinely, and they have a very high rate of cancer. If you go down the past of the East Asians, that's like Japan, Korea, China, the, you know, a lot of rice-based diet. Um, the problem with them is they put too much sodium in their food, and that gives them hypertension. They often smoke a lot of cigarettes, too. So that predisposes them to cerebral vascular disease, meaning intracranial atherosclerosis. So I should have been more precise. When I say cerebral vascular disease, I'm really referring to intracranial atherosclerosis associated with a high rate of stroke. Hypertension is the number one thing associated with all these silent strokes, which I mean small ones that add up. Um, then the next is the South Asians, like people from India. And a lot of people from India, the main thing I think that's getting them into trouble with their health is too much oil in their food, too much fried food. They get some saturated fat from the ghee, butter, for example. But the big thing that's relatively unique is they're eating a lot of oil in their food. Um, and I gave a bunch of lectures on all this stuff before. Okay, the, the best diet is obvious. Low fat, low sodium. It's even low protein, to be more precise. Vegan diet with no oil. They hardly ever get any of the chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, MI, stroke, very low rates of cancer, very low rates of impotence. I mean, it's obvious. It's where you want to be if you care about your health. There's tons of people on the Internet. It's like their job to lie. They hire all these trolls. And um, I think my site is, you know, gaining popularity. I'm still not too well known at all because I think I'm totally shadow banned, but I get all these trolls, you know, I get trolls for two main things. You get a troll if you talk about God, okay, and, and basically the reason is, you know, the left wants to destroy the idea of religion and God because they want to reduce the population, and if you reduce the population in the context of Christianity where every person is equal in the eyes of God, that would be seen as morally wrong. But if you go under atheistic Darwinism, then you can reduce the population and it's considered acceptable. Basically, the ruler becomes God. You can do whatever you want. So imagine you were the ruler and you had all that power. They want it to be atheistic Darwinism because then they become the equivalent of God, like a Roman emperor. And they can do whatever they want. And I guarantee you what they believe is that most of the public is what they would call useless eaters. Okay, That's a term that comes back from the 1930s. And they want to reduce their numbers. They think that all these so-called useless eaters are just wasting the resources of the world, polluting the sky, polluting the water, etc., etc. So they want them gone. Okay, And that's what's coming if people don't wake up to it. Anyways, okay, so why did I even make this whole video? Because a viewer sent me this, um, this picture here, which I thought was kind of fun. They saw the Spartan vegan diet and they said, why don't you call it the wise monk diet? Because I've been wearing that monk costume lately 
to look like Martin Luther with the tonsure type uh, haircut, typical of a monk, monk and the monk uh, habit. Uh, so they get in the habit of imitating the saints and Jesus Christo. So anyways, it's basically the same thing as a Spartan vegan diet, you know. Starches are the main source of calories, then fruits, then veggies, methylcobalamin, B12, get your social stuff straight. If I had to call it a monk diet, I'd call it the medical monk diet. Vegan monk's okay, but with medical monk, you get alliteration. Uh, so I still don't know it's the best name for myself, but I thought this was kind of fun, and it was very nice of the viewer to send me that. I think that might be the last slide. Oh, there's one more slide here, and this is basically just sort of the rationale of the whole diet. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you never want to eat meat, oil, sweets, alcohol. Hey, you know, if you're starving, fine, but un otherwise, I would say no. And there's a lot of people, you know, people who are borderline, which is many, many, many people, they can't be eating this fat stuff, this nuts, 70 90% of fat. Okay, and that's another thing I'll tell you. A lot of people tell me, well, why don't you team up with some famous nutrition expert and do videos with them and all this stuff? And I'm like, you don't understand. Those guys hate somebody like me, okay? I'm in a special, unique school, and it's, a, it's called a school of low-fat vegan diet. And I do that because I think it's the healthiest diet, all right? And there's been a lot of people in the school, Walter Kempner, Nathan Pritikin, Chef AJ, Dr. John McDougall, Jeff Nelson at Veg Source, because all the literature points to this being the healthiest diet, versus most of the famous people you see on the internet, they're famous because they're promoting stuff. And the way you get famous in, in the internet is you promote something that a company wants you to promote. So most of the, the so-called vegetarian vegan, vegan experts out there are promoting all this high fat stuff. They're promoting soy, they're promoting uh, olive oil, um, omega-3s, nuts, seeds, and so I don't do that. So, And also, lots of them are real famous. I mean, they get millions of views on all this stuff. You know, I don't, I get what, about 300 views on my average video? So what I'm saying is they wouldn't want to even associate with me because I'm a small-time player, so to speak, in, in terms of getting views. And I wouldn't want to pretend that I'm doing the same thing as them because they recommend a high-fat diet. I don't. So that's kind of what that's all about. And it's good for you to be able to recognize that because you'll see where the information's coming from. Okay. And the other thing you'll notice is people who recommend low fat diet, you don't, we don't have sponsors. Okay. Nobody sponsors me because there's, you don't make any money off a low fat vegan. They're healthy. Okay. I'm 60. I don't take any pills and other low fat vegans tend to be very healthy. So no corporate industry wants this low fat vegan stuff because there's no money in it.